Okay. Uh, we are now joined by our uh, winning driver of today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race, John Hunter Nemechek. Don, John Hunter, may you just uh, start off by uh, giving us um, the lowdown on your car today and the uh, talk about your your big win. Uh, man, we had a fast Toyota GR Supra, that's for sure. Um, just hats off to this whole team for bringing fast race cars to the racetrack every single weekend. Uh, I'm just like a guy that, that gets to hold the steering wheel and um, we were able to rebound and get the lead and search for clean air and uh, have enough speed to stay up front. And uh, maybe you can, before we open it up to questions, talk about this was the 200th victory, NASCAR Xfinity Series win for Joe Gibbs Racing. What's it mean to be the driver to take that one home? Uh, it means a lot to me, um, being able to win multiple times this year in the Xfinity Series and win for Joe Gibbs Racing previously. It's it's a big accomplishment, um, not only for myself, but for Joe Gibbs Racing and the whole Xfinity program. Uh, to have 200 wins in the Xfinity program is a huge accomplishment um, for Joe Gibbs Racing. and. Uh, uh, I was just the the guy in the right place to bring home 200, and um, I, I think we've brought home, well, I guess five this year, so we've been adding to it. Great. If you have a question for John Hunter, please raise your hand. We'll get you a mic. We'll start up here to Larry in the front. Larry Leach from AP. I heard a little bit in earlier interviews talking about uh, tying up with your, your teammate Gibbs. Was that early in the race, like 12 in? And explain what happened and just how tricky is the dynamic of, uh, you know, wanting to compete and win and do it fairly and deal with the dynamics of a teammate? Yeah. Um, I've been very vocal about teammates here recently, and uh, I think everyone has kind of seen that. Um, but when, when it comes down to it, uh, you're going to have teammates race around you when Joe Gibbs Racing brings three really fast Toyota GR Supras every single week. So um, it's it's on me. I take full accountability um, for the incident that happened. And uh, I was on the bottom. Um, Ty cleared me and uh, turn one on the top. And uh, I was trying to slide up behind him uh, to, to kind of get position uh, on the top off of turn two. Um, and when I cross his wake, I, I feel like I put him in a bad arrow spot and uh, maybe should have checked up a little bit more um, just to not get him free. Um, and once he got free, it was trying to check up and stay off of him and um, couldn't quite do that. Uh, he got a little tap from me, which ended up kind of turning him even more sideways. And then I got tapped from behind and uh, we both went spinning. So um, just bad circumstances, uh, but that one's on me and take full accountability for it. What about Bob? Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Was your car damaged at all from that? And did you once you realized what the tire strategy would be, were you confident you could win? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I didn't know if we could win uh, with the tire strategy that we had. Um, not knowing kind of how much tires were going to be uh, or how much they were going to mean towards the end of the race. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that it worked out strategy-wise. Um, and I, I don't believe we had any damage. I mean, it was slightest contact possible, um, just enough to for both of us to go around. Any other question for John Hunter? Oh, we'll go to here, Steve. Steve Connolly, the podium finish. Uh, the first two stages, spent a lot of time uh, just, uh, chasing down Justin Allgaier. The, if he doesn't have his issues on pit road um, and the strategy works out the way it does, do you have enough car to, to get around him? Um, to be honest, I, I don't know, um, circumstances-wise. Um, I mean, we did win the second stage, right? So um, it's it's kind of – we had a fast enough car, I feel like, um, but who knows what the circumstances. Any final – we'll go over to Lee. What are you going to tweet there, Bob? What? You got some – you got that, that – my interview pulled up? Yeah, I just wanted to see that. I just wanted to make sure I had it right. <laughs> I hear you. Is that, is that right? Uh, is, that, is that still accurate? I, accurate it, today? I'm pretty sure I, I did say that. Yeah. Yeah. Just digging it deeper, aren't you, Bob? <laughs> Just with Bob. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lee Spencer, CatchFence.com. So what are your plans for next year? <laughs> Knew this question was coming. Um, yeah, uh, for, for me, I'm 100% focused on, on this year and trying to win this Xfinity championship. Uh, for me, it 
we set goals coming into this year as a 20 team um, in the Xfinity series, and we want to go accomplish those. Um, so my full focus day in, day out right now is to go win this Xfinity championship and win as many races as I can. Um, I don't know what my plans are for 24, uh, to be honest with you. I have no clue. So uh, I feel like when my team comes up with something, uh, we, we definitely will announce it at that time. I mean, they floated your name around while Martin was still kind of dilly-dallying, and now since that's secure, I mean, when would you like to know what you're doing next year? Um, you know, because you can't wait to the very last minute, or you just want to see what opens up. Uh, I, I think for me, um, I mean, I could wait until after Phoenix, right? Um, it, for me, it's, it's all about head down, mindset right, not focusing on the future and focusing on the present. Um, it's going to try and win as many races as I possibly can and go win the championship. Um, I, that's one thing that I've yet to accomplish in the NASCAR ranks is winning a championship. So it's full bore on that. Go to Chris and then up here in the center. Chris Mankechens.com. John Hunter, when you look at the Xfinity playoffs, who do you think are going to be your biggest challengers or do you think it's going to be a, a battle of night beating yourselves? Every single one of them and ourselves. Um, I mean, you, you can't count anybody out, right? Like, you, you cannot count anybody out. The moment that you count someone out is the moment that they can overtake that. So for me, it's it's focusing on trying to race everyone every single week. And, and I feel like when you count somebody out, um, they, they are able to kind of overstep that mentality and, and probably pull something out that they you, you think that they wouldn't. Yep. Go in the center, then go to Lee. Eric Young with the Superspeedway.com. Big points day for you today. How important is it to keep gaining points toward that regular season championship heading into the playoffs? Uh, I mean, it's big to win the regular season championship. Um, I, I I think that there's value to that, right? 15 bonus playoff points going into it. Um, I think it's only really like three more bonus points right compared to second place so um i'd rather win a bunch of races and if that means we win the regular season championship then that's great um but winning a race is five five playoff points so that's a that's a big ordeal it'll lead then dustin on denny's podcast this week he said that he thought the depth in the truck series was deeper than in the xfinity series and You've had deep associations with both. I mean, you, you raced for a long time in trucks, um, gone back and forth in the Xfinity series. How would you answer that as far as where you think the greatest depth of, of competitive cars or trucks might be? Uh, I can answer this two different ways, right? From a driver's standpoint, I feel like both series have a lot of talent in them, right? Um, you don't really see one guy just rolling off into the sunset in either series. You see a bunch of guys winning races and running up front competitively. Um, but with the truck model and having a spec motor and everyone having the same spec motor um, and, and the rules being closer, I guess, it, it kind of equals it out to more of a level playing field, right? So um, I, I feel like that that has kind of separated the truck series and the Xfinity series a little bit. Um, so it's, it's really, I, I feel like talent-wise, probably close to the same. Um, I think he did say that there's probably 10 Xfinity cars on a regular basis that could possibly win an Xfinity race, right? Um, and there's maybe 15 trucks that can win a race um, every single weekend in the truck series. So I, I think when you look at talent, you, you aren't necessarily talking about driver talent, right? I think you're more or less talking about how close most of the truck teams are. I mean, one mistake in a truck race, and you go from leading to finishing 10th, right? So um, it's it's all about aero and, and trying to maximize your day on the truck side with how short the races are. Thank you. You're welcome. And we'll go over to Dustin and then wrap it up here in the middle. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, I'm curious, just from a, a race fan perspective of, that you would be, Looking ahead to next weekend's uh, Cup race at Indy, with having Shane Van Gisbergen back in in the race, Kamui Kobayashi in, Brody Kostecki, uh, Jensen let's, Button. Let's go, Kamui. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious: is to see those guys that don't always compete in the series. From your perspective, as somebody who does this, 
but even though you're not competing against them, what's your interest level in seeing them and what are the things that you're interested to seeing um, with the, those guys and what they can do? Uh, I, I think it's really cool for those guys to be able to come over and have a chance to run in, in the Cup Series, right? Um, I, I think what Shane did at Chicago – all the stars aligned uh, for for sure, and he was super fast. Um, I, I think that the interest of it is is super super neat for me. Um, I'm the type of guy that wants to go race anything and everything. So um, for me, if if I had the opportunity to go run a V8 supercar in Australia, I would definitely take that opportunity, right? So uh, I think it's really cool to see drivers be able to compete in different disciplines um, and, and being able to compete at a high level. Um, so for me, it's really neat. And hopefully I get the opportunity to do that in some other series as well. You're welcome. Then we'll wrap it up here. Steven Stump, FrenchLift.com. If I did the math right, I believe you and Austin Hill are now tied for the uh, regular season points lead. Um, you guys have had tons of speed. They've also you know, had tons of consistency. When you look at the tracks up ahead, do you feel that one or the other has a an advantage um <laughs> i to be honest with you i i don't know um i i feel like we have some really good racetracks coming up for us obviously austin is a very good super speedway racer when it comes to daytona um but we have two road courses daytona uh darlington and kansas left and three of those i would circle is probably three of my favorite places to go to, right? Um, so uh, I feel really confident about it. Um, yeah, we're tied for points after the last two weeks we've had. So it's nice to rebound and kind of put ourselves back in position. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, John Hunter. Good luck next week in Indy.